In this video, I'll give a demonstration of how to use OBA, the online biogas app, to calculate BMP, biochemical methane potential, from data that were measured using the gas density method, or the GDBMP method. So this method is described in quite a bit of detail here in this open access paper. The basic idea is to infer biogas composition based on based on an estimate of biogas density and that density estimate comes from weighing both biogas volume here accumulated biogas in a bottle that's been incubated for some time uh, initially early on perhaps uh, one day uh, perhaps a few days toward the end of a BMP test so this accumulated biogas is measured. It can be simply measured with, with inexpensive syringes as long as a uh, simple manometer is used to, to check that the pressure is, is at atmospheric pressure. It gives us biogas volume. And then mass is, biogas mass is measured by the change in bottle volume, typically from uh, one interval. So measured here, incubated again, vented again, and measured again in, in step four from one interval to the next. So here's some some data that were collected in a GDBMP experiment and we're interested in the data in, in two of the worksheets here. Setup has information on what's in each bottle. So there were nine bottles in this experiment for really primarily one substrate, this animal feed substrate called uh, substrate C. Cellulose was included as a positive control, as it always should be, to, to check the method. And then we have some inoculum-only bottles needed in order to determine methane production, endogenous methane production from the inoculum. So what's essential here? The first two columns, of course. Then we need to know how much inoculum was added to each bottle. And how much substrate Vs was added. Those are our essential columns here. Now, each time a bottle comes out of an incubator, again, in the beginning, that may be after one day, each time it comes out of an incubator, there are a few measurements that are made in the GDBMP method. All that's really necessary is biogas volume and this mass after removing biogas, but I strongly recommend uh, making a mass measurement before venting. And that was done in this data set. And with that information, you can check for biogas leaks. And you can even correct for biogas leaks. So here we have uh, measurement time. We're just going to use the elapsed time here, how long these bottles have been incubating. It's the difference between the current time and the start of the experiment. And then the biogas volume. We have some entries for the start because we need our uh, we need our mass measurement. We need to know the initial mass of the bottles. And then again, after measuring biogas volume, bottle mass is determined. This final mass, step four here, and that's in the final mass column. And as I mentioned, initial mass before venting is also determined. Was also determined. Uh, during this BMP test. So those are the columns we're going to work with in the, the measurements, measurements worksheet. So let's go to OBA. Here's the URL. And the GD BMP method was just added recently um, in January 2020. So I'm going to select GD here. Again, it's for gas density. And we need to know the pressure units, and we need to specify the pressure of biogas and the an approximate headspace pressure. I'll use kilopascals, the default. Say we're at 101.3 for ambient. Ideally, that's a measured value. It doesn't vary much in, uh, in, in most locations. Um, but it is a good idea to have some measurements. Biogas temperature, 
was about 20 in this experiment. So those values are going to be used for standardizing the biogas volume measurements. And now we need some information for for the, the mass measurements, the gravimetric measurements. So headspace pressure, an approximate value, unlike the, the ambient pressure and the ambient temperature, these next two values, headspace pressure and headspace temperature, do not have a large effect on the results. So an approximate value, this is absolute pressure, and it was pressure was uh, somewhere around 150 kilopascals or 1.5 or so atmospheres. Headspace temperature was around 32. These bottles were incubated at 35 and they cool a little bit when they come out of the incubator. So I'm going to select the same file that we were just looking at and sheet 2 has our biogas volume and mass data. Let's look at the preview here to make sure it was reading correctly. And it looks like it was. We're going to work with bottle ID, elapsed time, biogas volume, and these two mass columns. So we need to indicate the unit for time, and it is in days. That's correct, and volume is milliliters. The bottle ID column is called bottle ID. Time is elapsed time. Biogas volume, pre-venting mass here is called initial mass, and post-venting mass is final mass. That's all we need to get methane production. So here's a plot of our results. We can take a closer look here. And what's plotted is cumulative methane production in milliliters from each bottle. You can very clearly see that the three replicates for each condition, inoculum only here and substrate C here and cellulose here, we can see that the replicates group together closely, which makes sense. We can look at the, the numeric values here and what was just on the plot. What is called CVCH4 here. CV for cumulative volume, and then CH4 for methane. There are a few other columns worth pointing out. So XCH4 is the estimate of biogas composition, the mole fraction or the volume fraction of methane in biogas when that concentration has been normalized. So CO2 and methane sum to one. And in the recommended GD method called GDT in the paper. The mass loss in the biogas volume that values that are used to make that calculation are for the complete test, so from start to finish. So we end up with a single value per bottle, and that overcomes issues with low sensitivity or low resolution in our mass loss measurements. So we have a single value. This method works well, most, and it works well in most cases. And there's another column that's worth pointing, uh, that's worth mentioning here. We have some columns on leakage. So mass leak tells us how much mass loss there was from the end of one particular sampling uh, event to the beginning of the next one. So how much mass was lost during incubation? And those values are summed and given in the C mass for cumulative mass uh, leak column. So these numbers can be used to check for leakage, but in order to do that, we need to have an estimate of uh, the detection limit, how, how small a leakage value can, can we detect. And so in this experiment, what was done and what should always be done with the GDBMP method is some water control bottles that contain only water and are never opened, their septa are never punctured. Those are, are handled along with all the other BMP bottles in weight at the same times. And from the standard deviation of those measurements, we can get an estimate of the detection limit. So for this particular experiment, uh, perhaps it was around 50 milligrams or so. I can't remember. 
it would be important for me to check uh, if any of these numbers were large. Let's see how big they are. I'm going to sort these. So the smallest was uh, 17 milligrams, quite small, and the largest was 31. So let's assume that all of these are below the detection limit for mass loss, which I, for leakage, which I think was 50 milligrams in this experiment. So we don't have any real evidence of leakage, so we can continue with this GDT algorithm. It's the only one available right now in OBA. Okay, so we've got cumulative, we have cumulative methane production, these, these values that we need in order to calculate BMP. So now let's go ahead and calculate BMP. So once I select this box, then default options uh, are automatically selected and, and we will keep these. We want to normalize by the substrate mass. We want to subtract methane that comes from the inoculum inoculum, and then we want to calculate uh, means and, and standard deviation. As for the time, well, um, let's use the recommendation from uh, a large, uh, from uh, the paper by Holliger et al., which is 1% net of cumulative volume per day for at least three days. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about what this means um, later on. So there's no reason to allow extrapolation. Let's get our setup data. These are from the same file. This is the first sheet. So sheet one. Let's take a look at these data. These looked correct. And we're going to use description, the description column for grouping. Then we need to specify inoculum mass and substrate. VS mass because we'll normalize by substrate VS. So let me select these columns. And we need to indicate which which description means substrate only. Uh, it means inoculum only rather. Okay, so we have results. Here's a plot in this case with two substrates. Uh, a, numeric, a numeric summary is probably more useful. Let's take a look. So we have cellulose and substrate C, this uh, animal feed ingredient. Both of them have the same 1% net time, the time that's recommended for evaluating BMP, at least as a minimum. And then this mean column has our our mean BMP value. So for cellulose, it was about 346 milliliters of methane um, at 0 degrees Celsius and 101.325 kilopascals dry per gram VS. And here we have uh, substrate C, which has a substantially higher BMP of 482. We have estimates of uh, standard error and standard deviation as well. And of course we expect three for our, the number of replicates. So we can do a few more things here that are useful. It's always a good idea to look at SMP curves, specific methane production curves. And this is, um, these values are uh, normalized uh, net methane production normalized to substrate VES. So we were just looking at one of those values we called BMP. But it's a good idea to check the shape of these curves. And let's look at values without values from individual bottles. So these have a pretty smooth shape. Um, substrate C shows no real lag, which is good. Uh, there's not a lot of difference among the replicates, which is also good. There's a bit of a lag in our cellulose bottles. That's typical. It's not long. It looks like maybe it's two, perhaps three days or so. So these curves look good. We might also want to check the rates. This is something common 
that you would commonly do uh, as you're carrying out an experiment to see if you can stop it. And it, this, this gives me a chance to describe this 1% net criterion that I was talking about. Here on the y-axis, we have a log scale with the methane production rate as a percentage, percentage of cumulative production per day. So uh, it's around day 12 or 13 where the, the rate of methane production from these bottles, the net rate after subtracting the inoculum contribution, where it, it, it drops below 1%. So really it's between around day 11 and, and day 13. And the 1% net criterion uh, is, is defined as um, a rate at or below 1% for at least three days. So to get there, we need to, to be at these, this next set of observations, which turns out to be about 16 days. So that's where the 16 comes from. Let's go back. to uh, means, and let's pick a fixed duration. We can also use a uh, fixed value. Could be interpolated to just about anything. Not, um, I don't ge generally recommend interpolation unless you need it, because, for example, your sampling times varied for different bottles. Um, in this case, it's already set to the latest time, which is about 27 days. So here are our values. Cellulose is a little bit higher. Substrate C is a little bit higher as well. Um, not much. You would expect values to be a little bit higher for a longer duration. It's also possible to apply this Laysin protocol where we need to say which bottles had cellulose and we can get an automatic check of the, of the validation criteria. So this is based on the 1% net, and our cellulose yield doesn't quite, quite uh, meet the required value of 352. OK, so um, you, can, uh, you can use OBA for these GD calculations. Uh, OBA is available for free online. Again, the URL is here. And if you're interested in the in the paper I, I mentioned, the open access paper, this one here on the GD method, then that's open access and you can find it online as well. I'll post a link in the comments for this video.